Australia. Just Correct. before we get around to a few of the other stories of the day, the Greens have yet again reminded us why they are nothing more than a group of petulant kids <laughs> tweeting out, um, you know, back in black, F your surplus, all very charming. Um, seriously, James, I know that when you're in the party that introduced um, the ideas of Lydia Thorpe to the Senate, you can't ask for a lot. But is this really the level of discourse that they're pitching for? Well, it's pretty funny, Amanda. I mean, it suggests to me that, you know, Labor's got itself a real problem with its junior coalition, and they aren't a coalition. Let's, let's be real honest about that. A uh, partner in the Greens. But also, I think, you know, from the Greens, it felt a bit like a bit of a cry for help. It almost felt like, you know, Lydia, come take us back. We miss you. We can be just as profane and stupid and offensive as you. Let's get back together. <laughs> Now, let's talk about the profound mess that the Victorian Liberal Party find themselves in. Friday is expected to be D-Day for Moira Deeming, with a second party room meeting to decide if she is to be expelled. But a group of Deeming supporters are pushing for a delay, as Deeming's still waiting for an explanation about her conduct that justifies her um, being expelled. Now, James, what is going on here? This is just the perpetual free kick for Dan Andrews as they continually repunish a woman for the actions of unknown, uninvited, unconnected men. Well, and indeed, Amanda, they're punishing a woman for standing up for women. That's what this is all about. And let's not forget that that's the fundamental issue here. But what's happening with the Victorian Libs is so curious, it's so bizarre. As you say, it's a free kick for Dan Andrews. But it feels to me like they are in this mode where they're stuck thinking that Twitter is real life, taking advice from all these lefties on Twitter who don't you know, have the Liberal Party's best interest at heart at all. Um, they went to the last election with every moderate, woke policy you could imagine, you know, treaty, climate, all of this stuff. And did it get them, get them over the line? No, just maybe, guys, even in Victoria, people are looking for an alternative. I know it's crazy, Amanda, but, you know, there you have it. Hot tip, don't take advice from people who will never vote for you. Bingo. Um, some very worrying signs out of the construction industry. $2.2 billion worth of builders have collapsed since 2021. Construction failures have reached a nine-year high. Turns out Porter Davis was just the tip of the iceberg. And I confess, this is something really dear to my heart, having come from a family um, that was always and has always worked in the construction industry. There's a lot of factors going into this, inflation, labour shortages and, in some cases, unscrupulous builders. But at a time when we have a lack of supply in the market, this has to be just another blow to the aspirations of Australians to own their own home, surely? Well, it is terrifying. I mean, especially considering that you've got the government now saying that we want to get a million homes built in the five years from 2024 to the end of the decade. Um, I don't know how they're going to do that because... You know, as you say, the construction company is going under. Um, there's supply chain issues. There's so many other issues uh, in there. Uh, approvals, planning, everything else. I don't know how you get there, and I don't know how you get there without either dramatically subsidizing people's homes, which, of course, is a blow to aspiration and, you know, investment and wealth creation and things like that. But also, you know, it, it's just a road to ruin where you're not going to wind up getting people into houses. This feels very much to me like the Building the Education Revolution program of, you know, I think, 12 or 15 years ago when the government tried to build all of those school things, you know, the halls and the covered outdoor learning areas and everything like that, and, you know, pushed up the prices of everything. It was a huge drama for the entire construction industry, it made everything inflationary. There was pinch points everywhere. And it feels like they're in the same position as this without doing anything to actually support these builders, who, of course, are the ones who are going to have to get this done ultimately. Yeah, there's lots of uh, can be done, but none of it's been done in the budget just released. Now, thank you so much, James Morrow, for your time. I really appreciate your insights. We'll see you soon.